working out players on the fundamentals. And today we're going to take you through some moves that you can use in the game. Not only will you learn great fundamentals, uh, great moves, but you'll expand your game to another level. Ready to start sweating? Let's get after it. The Allen Iverson Killer Cross. He's from my hometown, and we've played uh, street ball together, actually, and against each other. And we do clinics probably every other year in Hampton Roads. Let me break it down for you. He's here. His shoulder's lower than the defense, so he gets that leverage. If I play straight-legged in this game, I'm dead. I must play my shoulders below his and my ball off my foot below my knee. So as I start my move, I come here. The ball's way outside my knee to get past the D. As I see his sternum, it's a quick crossover into my uh, scoring uh, opposite hand. This is a slow to quick move. Here we go. Slow, quick. Slow, quick. Allen Iverson killer crossover counter. So as I cross over and he doesn't go for it, I'm going right behind my back. So it's here, 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 attacking. Make sure, players, any of these moves that you're making them within two dribbles, you're getting your next play in two seconds, and you're playing in straight lines. Anytime you handle the ball too much, the defense is set. Make your move, get rid of it. Get to a play. Here we go. Here we go. Next move is the Tony Parker. I'm going down, I'm going behind my back, and then boom, quick crossover to my right. Make sure if you want to get past the D, you keep the basketball below your knee. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, great move. That's how you work out. This next move is the Tony Parker counter. He's going behind his back, crossover, and then quick crossover again. Now, usually he does that in one speed, but since this is a counter, uh, he's going to change his speed. And that's a great way to beat the defense. You change their stance uh, by changing your speed and your direction. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. This is the Chris Paul inside out. Basically, I want to change the defensive stance. If I see his sternum, I got to make a move or change direction. So Chris Paul actually puts that defender in a chair. He doesn't break, it, break his ankles, he breaks his back. He puts him in the chair and he whips it here and he might go step, step, finish. Let's look at the move. Put him in a chair, put him in a chair. Uh, uh. 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 
show you the Chris Paul counter ways to break ankles with the counter so if I go inside out and he doesn't go for it and I see his sternum I probably got to change direction so what Chris Paul does sometimes is he'll go inside out cross which is a good move what we're gonna do is get a little bit more creative a little more innovative you might not do this move in the game but it's good to practice it we're gonna go inside out behind the back shoot that floater Let's look at it. Here we go. Next move is the Derrick Rose killer crossover. He's going between his legs, behind his back, if he sees that defender's sternum. Let's look at it. show you Derrick Rose's killer crossover with the counter. I'm going between my legs, behind the back. If I see a sternum, boom, crossing right back over into my finish. Next move is the Dirk Nowitzki. I'm playing off the bounce. I cross over. If I see him bite, I come back, knock it down. Let's look at the move. Next move is the Nowitzki counter. So what I'm doing, I'm crossing over, stepping back. If he closes out, I'm going by for my finish. And depending on whatever side he takes away, okay, is, is where you go. So if he closes out to the right, you go left. And that's the whole thing with basketball. You want to make the defense uh, play a closeout game. You want to make your defender, all right, play a closeout game so that you have that separation. Here we go. on the Darren William spin series. First move, I come in, I set him up with the inside out spin. Second move, I might come between my legs. If he bites, I'm spinning this way. And the third move, which he does a lot, 
As you come down, spin, pull back, cross over, attack the outside leg. work on the Darren William spin series. First move. I come in, I set him up with the inside out spin. He'll come into his defender, fake the inside out, get that contact, and then spin once he has contact. Let's look at the move. Use that defender to absorb contact. Boom. It's the best move of the series. This is the Darren Williams counter to a spin series. If I might come between my legs, if he bites, I'm spinning this way. I hit him with between the legs. If I see his sternum, I'm spinning off of him. Here we go. Great move. work on the Darren William spin series. Bonus move, we're going to give you the Darren Williams counter crossover step back. So he's coming down, he spins, hits, comes back, crosses over, coming to you to a playoff arena near you. Here we go. Another way. This next move is the Grayson Bruche CBA stutter. He likes to dribble low, he likes to dribble hard. So I'm coming down between my legs twice to freeze, and I'm going in for my finish. It's more of a freeze dribble. Here we go, man. Next move is the Grayson Boucher counter, where we're going between the legs twice. If he hits there, I'm going there. Reading his sternum, changing his stance. <laughs> Next move is the Steve Nash jab step shoulder swivel. So as I come up to him, I turn my shoulders and my feet 
to the left. I get that defense outside my body. I change speeds to change the stance. I make short, violent fakes and take long, low steps to get into my finish. Next move is the Steve Nash counter. And a counter is if you have a great go to Steve Nash jab, but a good defender takes it away, you gotta have a counter or a second move. So if I see his sternum, I change the stance, and today's counter would be a crossover. But make no mistake, you can go behind the back, between the legs, maybe even spin like an old Steve Smith. Let's look at it. That's how you work out. And we're going to work on the Ginobili jab dribble, where I have the ball in my left hand and I jab and show drive and put the ball off my top foot. If he backs up, I come back to my place, and I'm knocking down that, that sweet lefty J. Let's look at it. Next move is the Ginobili counter, where he puts the ball in his weak hand, and he gets his hip and his foot into the defender, almost makes contact, and now he's going up with his sweet lefty J. Let's look at it. I'm going to make contact now. Make contact. Oh. Oh. called the Chauncey Explosion. Two ways to change a defender's stance uh, by changing uh, your direction and changing your speed. So I'm going to come up slow and then boom, and I'm going to beat his ankles. My ankles to his ankles, my hands to his hands and get him to uh, change his stance. A slow to quick move, Chauncey. I'm going to dribble so hard that it almost puts dents in the floor. That way I get a quicker dribble. the Chauncey counter. If he goes for my first move between the legs, I can cross in front. Let's look at it. move is the Ricky Rubio with some Spain international flavor. What I'm going to do is come up to him slow and go quick behind my back twice and I'm into my next play. And whatever you do, make sure you're driving in straight lines. Make sure you go north-south. Here we go.
the next move is the Ricky Rubio counter. Where I'm going behind my back twice. I read his sternum. Boom. I'm going between my legs for the finish. Here we go. Here we go. Ah, oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Gotcha. Whoops. Here we go. That's how you do it. It's not what you do, it's what you emphasize. And I like to talk about these five things uh, that I found through basketball and you can use it in your life. One, you gotta have intensity. If you wanna change your game, you got to change your work ethic. There's no microwave success, man. You got to work yourself out to be a player. You can't just play to be a player. So a work ethic is important with intensity. Consistency, man. You got to do this over and over and over again. You got to put yourself in a situation where you're making reads with a teammate. You're getting repetition at these drills every single day to build habits. It's perfect practice that has permanent results. Uh, persistence, man. You're going to fail. You got to use pain. You got to use uh, failure as your motivation. And to me, you got to have true sacrifice. And what that means is, what are you willing to give up to get something? What are you going to give up to get? So you got to make that decision. That, that means to me, true persistence, sticking with your game until you reach your final destination. Faith. You got to believe this is going to work and you drill for hours and hours and hours, when the lights come on, man, you can't have uh, game anxiety. You can't have any fear. That's the opposite of faith. You gotta have tremendous confidence that, you know what? You deserve success. You put in a thousand hours. You put in 40,000 hours. Now you're ready to play 40 minutes in the game. You deserve success. You gotta have faith. And the last one is love, man. You gotta have a passion. Your purpose backed up with your passion means that you're unstoppable. And if you do have a true passion for the game, you won't quit when you get bored, you won't quit when you get tired, and you'll play this game for as long as you want to. You can go out on your own terms. But a true love for the game, a true passion, transcends over everything. If I can help you out with a uh, workout, or if you'd like me to come to your hometown and do a clinic or training session, you can reach me at the information below. I really enjoy working you out. The rest is up to you. Get after it.